When I glanced ahead in my Bible and I saw that the Pauline epistles were coming to an end and the pastoral epistles were starting, I made an ass out of me and umption and thought we were done reading letters from Paul. And, and we are in a sense because these are fake letters from Paul, but so was the last one. So nothing has changed, apparently. We're still reading fucking letters from fucking people pretending they're fucking pa fucking old. Yeah, but at least this one addresses an important societal issue. And, of course, I'm talking about how bitches need to be quiet in public or go wait in the truck. Wow, oh God, yeah, there's plenty of that. So we're going to be knocking out First and Second Timothy this week, also known as the pinnacle of New Testament vagina loathing. And despite biblical proclamations to the contrary, speaking in public alongside us this week will be the lovely Lucinda Lusions. Lucinda, welcome back. You know, as short as this book was, I probably would have made it my way through it in about 15 minutes if I didn't have to keep going across the room and picking up my damn Bible. Yeah, no shit. There was some Chuck-worthy shit in this one, I will give you that. So uh, go ahead and start us off, if you would. Well, we can start with a positive note. Unlike all of the other letters from Paul and letters from fake Paul, this one doesn't start out with eight pages of God thinking. Mm -hmm. He basically says, I'm Paul, Jesus, Jesus, grace, peace. Now let's get on with it. Right. <laughs> and, and right away, it's suspect because this letter writer, who's allegedly Paul, never says anything like, you know, I'm Paul. Yes, the real Paul, who sounds just like this when he's not lying. And I'm real Paul. <laughs> and as we all know, that's the signature phrasing of real Paul's writing. So I'm skeptical yeah, right away. Usually gets to that pretty quick. And in case you're wondering, the it in Let's Get On With It refers to everyone except Paul being full of shit. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take long to get there. Nope. Nope. By chapter 1, verse 3, he's talking about false prophets and fools and people teaching the wrong version of Christianity. Which is kind of interesting to reflect on. I, I mean, we know that this was actually written about 100 years after Paul's first ministries. Mm -hmm. But if you take this at face value, you have to assume that nine minutes after Jesus rose from the dead, people started arguing <laughs> about church doctrine. And even if it took them 100 years, that's a pretty clear sign that Jesus was a shitty teacher. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and I, I think this book demonstrates why right away. After spouting some Deepak Chopra shit about how true understanding comes from a pure heart and sincere faith, he then warns the reader off of people who have, quote, turned to meaningless talk, end quote. Oh, this whole me fucking talk? book is yeah. meaningless talk. <laughs> right. the, the, the lead in <laughs> sentence was meaningless. Well, there were clearly a bunch of Jewish holdouts back then, and they're, you know, still talking about real estate semantics. I'm pretty sure we get all this land from God pretty soon. It's, it's great that you guys are on board with his son like that. Love it. But the title deed is still Jews only. Right, I to, yes. I need to tell you, and because Christians are insane, this loophole probably actually worried them, mm -hmm. and they tried to ban genealogy yes. in the problem areas <laughs> right. like Galatia. And then he starts talking about the law and how it's really there for liars and patricidal fornicators, mm -hmm. which sounds suspiciously like he's saying, good folks like you, me, and Josh Duggar don't need to worry about these rules. They're for bad people. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. According to the Bible, the world would be a happy, peaceful place if it weren't for the following groups of people. In order of appearance, atheists, mm -hmm. obviously, people who murder their parents, Besides the atheists, I guess. Yeah, right, right. Also the Menendez brothers. Mm -hmm. They're bad at lists and Venn diagrams. <laughs> also homosexuals, clearly. Mm -hmm. And slave traders. Not owners, just traders. <laughs> right. Yeah. And also liars. Of yeah, course. they get around to that eventually, too. Of course. And then he closes the chapter off by specifically naming two guys he knows to be completely full of shit. Well, and, and one of them is just Alexander. <laughs> he just says Alexander. Like, it, 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 he doesn't give a last name or a, a location, nothing. So according to the Bible, don't trust Alexander. Thanks for the specificity there, Paul. They had surnames and lineages back then, asshole. That's 90% of this book. Then in chapter two, he goes on to start detailing the specific things that he wants everybody to know about, just in case this letter is dug up a hundred years later, when all of these exact issues are at the forefront of disagreements in the church. Right, yes. Number one is that priests are superior to kings. Mm -hmm. And just to be sure everyone knows he's not lying about this one, he points out that he's not lying about this one. <laughs> Finally got to it. Chapter two, verse seven. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I'm not lying. <laughs> A teacher of the Gentiles in faith. All right, all right. Maybe it is real fake Paul. Sounds yeah. pretty authentic. <laughs> yeah. Now it does, yeah. And then we get to the misogyny. And boy, do we. Okay, kind of a long quote here, but I don't think analogy can do this justice, so bear with me here. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 through 15. Also that women should dress themselves modestly and decently in suitable clothing, not with their hair braided or with gold, 
pearls, or expensive clothes, but with good works, as is proper for women who profess reverence for God. Uh-huh. Let How do you a wear wo- a work? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let a woman learn in silence with full submission. Yes. I, I permit no woman to teach or to have authority over a man. She is to keep silent. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. All makes sense. Yet she will be saved through childbearing, providing they continue in faith and love and holiness with modesty. Wow. The misogyny per word ratio there is staggering. Yeah, don't forget Christianity. This is the New Testament. You can't wave this away with your magical, the Jew parts don't count excuse. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yes. If I'm understanding this correctly, women are treated like low output oxen for two reasons. (laughs) First of all, God made Adam a stem cell incestuous fuck doll named Eve, and all the world's problems started happening since Mm -hmm. then. Right. Strike one and two on the women. But more importantly, whenever there's a question of authority between two things, the younger one has to be, I guess, a silent rape slave for the older one. So I, I'm not sure they thought this one all the way through. I, I, no, <laughs> no, it Jews doesn't quite be, came before add Christians up. And, to rape you. And then we <laughs> move right along to who can and can't be a bishop, as though none of that women need to fuck off and make me a sandwich stuff needed any more detail. That's all. We're done with that. Enough said. And the qualifications for bishopdom are a bizarre combination of legitimate gauges of moral character and random bullshit. Right. He has to be temperate, Mm -hmm. hospitable, gentle, sensible. I like it. And also he can't have bitchy kids or an (laughs) ex-wife. Ridiculous. He has to tie a sheep shank, bring (laughs) you a mid-market shrubbery, four, five, (laughs) forty-time or better, beats his wife the right amount, obviously, Mm -hmm. 90 percentile or better in midichlorian count, no Jew spies. (laughs) If you put a cat next to him, he won't kick it right away. It's a weird <laughs> list. <laughs> Who's running these job interviews? Yeah, the same also goes for people who want to be deacons or women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this was almost a big problem because a bunch of women realized this passage makes it sound like women are allowed to be church officials. Mm-hmm. But it turns out that women weren't allowed to read that in the first place, so yeah. it, you know, it became a moot point. <laughs> who taught you octagon? And I, I love the notion that Timothy, Paul's most trusted student... Needs to be told stuff like bishops shouldn't be violent drunkards through a letter. So, Paul, A, didn't trust him to figure this out on his own, and B, never thought to bring it up in the years they wandered around together. I should have said this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I, nice this. People, yeah. I noticed a lot of violent drunkard uh, bishops coming about. Uh, <laughs> Staggering so. along, yeah. Then the author just goes ahead and tips his hand all the way by saying, Now, as to stuff the Spirit has told me will happen 100 years from now or so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the Spirit warned him, apparently, of new sects of Christianity that would show up and demand mm. abstinence and food restrictions. Or- <laughs> right. <laughs> but apparently, whenever they had an issue... The church would just happen to find an extra century old letter from Paul. Whatever exactly. They yes. Yeah. Yes. Look, it says open now. How would he have known that? <laughs> Magical. Okay, I'm opening. Whoever opens this letter was right about whatever they were just saying. Lahayim, real Paul, the truth teller. <laughs> All right, that's what he says. I'm right. He says, All right. Hundred years ago, it's real. He, he also includes Truth-telling. the naturalistic fallacy here when he says that everything God made is safe to eat. So. Here's a little irradiated cow dung for all my Christian friends. It says in your Bible, you can eat this. He also warns Timothy not to follow profane myths and old wives' tales, Mm -hmm. urging him instead to follow polite myths and new wives' tales. (laughs) And then we learn that children should take care of their mothers when their dads die, but only, and this part is important, Mm -hmm. only if she never fucks anyone again. Yeah, because if a widow has an orgasm, she apparently turns into an undead fuck zombie. It's, yeah, yeah. That's, Didn't make that up, by the way. No. That's in the <laughs> Bible. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 6. Check it out. That's in your book. We've been lying really to you is. about this. Fuck also, zombie. Also, people who don't give money to their family are even worse than atheists. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, and they keep making this distinction between real widows and fake ones. Yeah, right? And apparently, even though women <laughs> should let their girly bits dry up when their husbands die, Paul reluctantly <laughs> says that young widows can remarry because apparently without a dick to slap them around, they'll start following the devil and gossiping. <laughs> Bitches be following <laughs> Satan, you know. They just yeah, yeah. Be following <laughs> Satan. But if they're busy sucking dick and making hoagies, they got no time for Satan. Right. They try to gossip, it just sounds like humming. So it's like, <laughs> you're only as godly as the dick in your mouth. <laughs> the message I got from that. 
Then he ensures that the J-dubs can fuck their kids with impunity by implementing that two-witness rule that says no accusation against an elder counts without at least two witnesses. And just in case this book wasn't already the worst one in the Bible, Chapter 6 opens up with a ringing endorsement of slave masters and how damn worthy they are. Yes, it does. (laughs) By the way, their reasoning is that uppity Christian slaves make the whole religion look bad. Seriously, that's the... (laughs) First verse of chapter six. Look this up. Book. This book was so fucking bad. And then he talks shit about us specifically. Mm-hmm. He says that anyone that disputes the words of Jesus is conceited, understands nothing, and has a morbid craving for controversy and disputes about words. So, yeah, that pretty much nails it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I have a pretty good handle on nothing. The other mm-hmm. stuff is, you know, conceited, morbid craving for controversy <laughs> and disputes about words. Yeah, that's. Yeah. But in chapter 6, verse 9, we learn that at least the Bible agrees with us that Creflo Dollar is an asshole. Yes, it does. Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. Quick note about the Bible for all the televangelists out there that I'm sure are listening. First of all, great read. You're going to love <laughs> oh, yes. it. Fantastic <laughs> book. Check it out. But keep in mind that it specifically says in 1 Timothy 6 that people who think godliness is a means to financial gain are giant heathenous assholes. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Be ready for that part. That it does. Now, I'd have to say, honestly, I think you would have to go all the way back to the Pentateuch to find something more horrible than First Timothy. I mean, I mean there, there were bits in Judges and Joshua that had more horrible imagery and whatnot, but as far as, like, actually telling people to do immoral shit, it hasn't been this bad since we were learning to stone non-virgin wives and Saturday <laughs> stick gatherers to death. And they're so specific about the terrible stuff now. At least in the Old Testament, there's more of an implied lesson, you know, like, and the submissive woman lived happily ever after. Right, yeah. Get it? Get it? But now it's just <laughs> rape that black woman right now. And then rape your wife. <laughs> right Fuck. after that. Fuck this fucking book, y'all. Well, but unfortunately, we're not quite done timothy yet, as there's a whole second book to knock out before it's over. Awesome. Yeah, and that's I'll right. I have those loose ends yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this one starts off with a return to Paul's long, boring openings. But this one is tinted with a little more butthurt and arrogance than we're used to getting from him. Yeah, okay, so he's in prison because Jesus and boo-fucking-who and everybody's abandoned him and boo-fucking-who mm-hmm. some more. That's this whole fucking book. Right, then he implores Timothy to do all the good stuff and none of the bad stuff. And mm-hmm. that's about as specific as he gets on matters of ethics. <laughs> then he so names weird. a couple more people that are definitely full of shit. Uh-huh. And then we get a quick reminder that atheism and heathenism spread like a gangrenous herpetic <laughs> sore. And everybody understood that because, yep. you know, yeah. well, that was yeah. pretty standard. Right. There's also more shit about gossip in this one. I'd love to see a side-by-side comparison of how many times gossip and sodomy came up. I right. guarantee gossip wins out by at least double. God hates gossipers. Yeah. Then, he, then he tries for analogy and fails biblically. He basically says... People are like spoons, such a and part. some spoons are gold, some are silver, some are wooden, but you're a special spoon. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. it. That's, yeah. the, that's the actual analogy that he uses in the fucking I, Bible. Yeah, so I, I guess the way I read it, uh, I think they were saying that if you wash your ass with the wooden spoon, <laughs> then you're ready to have Jesus inside you. I see. You know, but that makes absolutely no sense, so I really have no idea what the fuck that means. <laughs> Me either. And then he starts warning him about all the crazy fuckers he's going to come across right before the end times. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's play out the chronology on this, okay? In a letter written after Timothy was dead, <laughs> it warned Timothy that he would be alive during the second coming. Yes. These fucks weren't even that. trying. Right. <laughs> and then there was a, a few lines of humble brags about how persecuted Paul's been. Keep in mind, once again, That if you take this at face value, this is a letter where Paul is telling Timothy about shit that happened while Timothy was there. (laughs) (laughs) Like, Paul's turned into Chris Farley interviewing Paul McCartney. He's like, remember remember when we got persecuted in Iconium and Lister? That was awesome. (laughs) Remember remember when we got prison raped on three different continents together? (laughs) Yeah, you you probably do. I don't don't know. I don't know why I brought that up. Such an idiot. I'm so stupid. I don't know why I brought that up. Sorry. And then we wrap it all up with some I'm awesome. God has a special crown for me. Come see me sometime. Alexander's still a dick. And don't forget to bring my coat and my copy of Punisher War Journal number six. Copy of Fletch. <laughs> yeah, the remote exactly. to my VCR. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, I will say as far as Paul forgeries go, this one was pretty good. It had the same boring, pointless, rambling, open, middle, and close that we've really come to expect from him. I yeah. mean, hell, the author even refrained from reminding us that he wasn't lying in this <laughs> Yeah, thing, so. well, and, and to be honest, we probably should have rolled Titus and Philemon into this segment since they're only, like, 
nine words long combined, but fuck it. You know, we deserve an easy assignment <laughs> now and again. So the Babel will be back in three weeks to polish off those two, and then we'll move on to Hebrews. All right. I mean, I'll try to hold out until then, but I'll be damned if these pages don't turn themselves. <laughs> I, I'll try. Well, I'm not allowed to talk in public. So I won't be here for the next one, I guess. Oh, uh, nice try, but no try, no dice. If you're going to use those <laughs> rules, you also have to submit to your husband, and you definitely well, trust me. You don't want that. We can talk about that if I don't. Well, the, the good news though is that there are <laughs> only five babbles to go, guys. Five more to go. That's still too many. Yeah, it is. <laughs>